In a previous video, we completed an absorption costing income statement. In this video, we'll prepare a variable costing income statement. Recall that under absorption costing, fixed manufacturing overhead costs are absorbed into the cost of the product. Both fixed and variable overhead are treated as inventoriable product costs. Absorption costing is required in Canada under both IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, and ASPE, Accounting Standards for Private Enterprises. An alternative approach is to use variable costing. Under variable costing, only variable manufacturing costs are considered appropriate product costs, including direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. All fixed manufacturing costs are treated as period costs, expensed immediately as they are incurred. Let's use the same example we used to produce an absorption costing income statement, but this time prepare a variable costing income statement instead. Florence Limited produces novelty products, which they sell to party stores for $125 per unit. Recently, they began producing a new product. The following cost and sales data is available for the first three months of operations, January 1st through to March 31st. Beginning inventory, zero units. Well, that makes sense. It's brand new. Units produced, 10,000. Units sold, 9,000. Manufacturing costs include fixed overhead, a total of $155,000, variable overhead per unit, $4, direct labor per unit, $16, direct materials per unit, $40, and then non-manufacturing costs, including fixed selling and admin, a total of $218,000, and variable selling and admin per unit of $5. Assuming the company uses variable costing, prepare a variable costing income statement for the first quarter. Under variable costing, step one is to calculate the per unit variable cost of the product. This includes direct materials per unit of $40, direct labor per unit of $16, and variable overhead per unit of $4, for a total variable cost per unit of $60 each. This is the total per unit variable cost that we'll use to determine the variable cost of goods sold and the value of ending inventory. Step two is to prepare the variable costing income statement. We'll start with the company name, the name of the statement and the date. Here we have Florence Limited, income statement, variable costing, and quarter ended March 31st. We then calculate the sales revenue as $125 per unit selling price multiplied by 9,000 units which of course is equal to $1,125,000. We then calculate the variable cost of goods sold, starting with the title, Variable Cost of Goods Sold. Next is opening inventory, which in this case is zero because it was a new product. Add in the variable manufacturing costs, calculated as 10,000 units multiplied by $60 per unit, which is equal to $600,000. Adding opening inventory of zero plus variable manufacturing costs of $600,000 is equal to 600,000, which is the cost of goods available for sale. Next, we deduct our ending inventory. We started with zero units, add in the 10,000 units produced, subtract the 9,000 units sold, and it's equal to 1,000 units in ending inventory. 1,000 units multiplied by the variable per unit cost of $60 equals $60,000 in ending inventory. $600,000 minus $60,000 is equal to $540,000, which is the variable cost of goods sold. Note that this can also be calculated as the number of units sold, 9,000, multiplied by $60, which is also equal to $540,000. Remember that this is a variable costing income statement, so we also have to include the variable selling and admin expenses, calculated as the number of units sold, 9,000 multiplied by $5, which is equal to $45,000. So the total variable costs are the variable cost of goods sold of $540,000 plus the variable selling and admin expense of $45,000, which is equal to total variable cost of $585,000. Next, we calculate the contribution margin, which is sales revenue of $1,125,000 minus total variable costs of $585,000, which is a contribution margin of $540,000. This is the amount of income that contributes to covering fixed costs and the required operating income. We now deduct all of the fixed costs, starting with the fixed selling and admin expenses of $218,000. We then have to include 100% of the fixed manufacturing costs, $155,000. 
Remember, under variable costing, the fixed manufacturing costs are expense as period costs. Operating income is equal to the contribution margin minus all the fixed costs. Therefore, $540,000 minus fixed selling and admin expenses of $218,000 minus fixed manufacturing costs of $155,000 is equal to an operating income of $167,000. This is a variable costing income statement with 100% of the fixed manufacturing costs expensed as a period cost. We have now completed both an absorption costing income statement in a previous video, which shows an operating income of $182,500 and a variable costing income statement with operating income of $167,000. Let's compare them directly. When you place these income statements side by side, you can quickly see the following. Operating income under variable costing, in this example at least, is lower. Why is there a difference of $15,500? Because we have expensed 100% of the fixed costs, the full $155,000 under the variable costing income statement. Under the absorption costing income statement, we have only expensed $139,500, calculated as the 9,000 units sold multiplied by the fixed manufacturing cost per unit, which under absorption costing is $15.50. Fixed manufacturing costs are therefore lower under absorption costing. Where is the remainder of the fixed manufacturing overhead costs? The remaining $15,500 calculated as $155,000 minus $139,500 has been deferred as part of ending inventory. The value of the ending inventory is on the balance sheet as an asset and it won't be expensed until a future period when the inventory is sold. Note that this understanding allows us to complete a reconciliation between the absorption costing operating income and the variable costing operating income. For the reconciliation, we can start with either absorption costing operating income or variable costing operating income, but we'll start with absorption costing operating income of $182,500. We then take the ending inventory under variable costing $60,000 and deduct the ending inventory under absorption costing $75,500. $60,000 minus $75,500 is equal to negative $15,500. If we now take the absorption costing operating income of $182,500 and add the negative $15,500, it's equal to $167,000, which of course is equal to the variable costing operating income. You can see that if opening inventory is zero, the difference between the absorption costing operating income and the variable costing operating income is equal to the difference in the value of the ending inventory under both methods. You can now see how a variable costing income statement is prepared, but why would a company choose to produce one? We know that they're not permitted under I4S or ASPE for external reporting purposes. So why would a company prepare a variable costing income statement? Well, that's a topic we'll cover in a future video. Thanks so much for watching.